We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. Uh oh, thrift diving. Hey, what's up? It's Serena Pia from thriftdiving.com, which is a do-it-yourself blog, YouTube channel, and podcast that helps you decorate, improve, and maintain your home with paint, power tools, and thrift stores without sacrificing your budget, the environment, or style. Welcome to episode 134 of the Thrift Diving Podcast. And I have to apologize, I have been MIA for the last few episodes. (laughs) But today I'm jumping back into the podcast. I'm going to explain to you everything that I've been doing with this amazing project that has really stolen my attention, my time, my focus. But it's been a really great project because I'm doing something that I have never done before. I am actually doing a makeover in somebody else's home. My friend, I'm not going to say her name. (laughs) She wants to remain anonymous. And what's really crazy is that we're ref- we're ref- recording the entire thing. We're filming everything and she still wants to remain anonymous. So I'm just going to call her my friend and let you know that we are doing an HGTV style episode for her bathroom. And this is insane. And I'm going to give you the backstory on how this came to be and what you have to look forward to and what I'm kind of nervous about because I've never done this before and all of the things. I'm, I'm just going to cover the entire project and give you a behind the scenes look, or I should say, listen into everything that's going on with this project. And, you know, the things that have been going really well, the things that have kind of stalled us. So yeah, let's jump into it. All right. So this is something, this is a project that I have really been wanting to do for a long time. Not, not, this particular project, but I've always wanted to go into somebody else's house and help them make over their home. And, you know, if you've been following this blog, this podcast, my YouTube channel for a long time, you'll know that my own house has pretty much been the entire, like, 12 years (laughs) I've been making over my house, doing projects inside, outside, some rooms I've kind of changed multiple times, but it's always been about my house. Well, this is the first time that I've actually made it about somebody else's house. And this is kind of the idea that I've been wanting to do for a while. You know, I imagined one day I would have a Netflix series, right? A thrift diving show where we go into other people's homes and we make over their rooms. And, and you know, ideally the people would help themselves. Now, I know that you've seen some HGTV style shows where, you know, people are actually helping out, right? Like, you know, remember way, way back, um, and I can't remember the name of this, but remember that the families would switch homes and then they would make over each other's. What was the name of that show? For for the life of me, I can't remember off the top of my head. But it was this amazing show where you saw everybody getting dirty, right? Like everybody's hands were on this project. You had the designer, you had the carpenter, you had each homeowner doing things. And I loved it. And I always thought, okay, that'd be a great thing to do, right? To go in somebody else's house. But I never did it because there was always this fear of how would I even coordinate that, right? Like this confusion and hesitance of, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that because it's easy when you're doing a project in your own home, right? Like we know that a project takes three times as long as what you think it's going to take. So if I say I'm going to do a kitchen makeover and it's going to take two weeks, well, guess what? It's probably going to take six weeks. That's just how it is. You know, you go to Home Depot, you go to Lowe's three or four times in a week trying to get things that you didn't remember you needed to get. And so that was always my hesitation of doing projects in other people's homes. How how to navigate those logistics? You know, do you say, look, we're going to get this done in a week and then it turns into three weeks? I mean, how does this work? And so that was always the thing that kind of stopped me from wanting to help other people because I I didn't know how to coordinate this. So I got this really good idea. So one of the brands that I work with, Bathworks, they had done a couple of projects with me over the last several years. The first project that I did was painting my own shower. And I did post that video. If you haven't seen it, go down below to the links. I am going to show you in that video how my, my, you know, three by three shower stall looked then in 2017 compared to what it looks like now. It actually looks pretty much the same. It hasn't peeled. It hasn't cracked or any of that stuff, which is great. 
The thing is, is that now they have a new project. They have a new product. And it's not just this uh, refinishing kit that you put on with a roller, but you actually spray it on. And so they wanted me to do a video showing that. Well, I've already done my shower. I, I don't have another ugly shower. And so that was going to require me to go find somebody else with an ugly shower, either a pink, blue, colorful tub shower, or one that was just hideous. And that was their word, not mine. <laughs> and so I started thinking, what if we did an HGTV style episode where we find somebody that has a hideous or colorful tub that needed to make this over that wants to make it over, but didn't have a lot of money to do it and didn't really have the know-how, didn't have the skill or the confidence to handle a project like this. Maybe they're just not a DIYer and they don't have a big bank account to pay someone $15,000 to handle a project like this. So I thought, why don't we find somebody and then we could then transform their tub and shower and make it a complete makeover and have it be something that's affordable, right? Like we're going to use paint, we're going to use power tools, maybe thrift stores, a little bit of thrifted stuff here and there. And we're going to hire a videographer. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> and so I pitched that idea to them, to Bathworks and said, hey, let's do this project. We'll, you know, we'll find somebody that has this qualification of a tub shower that's colorful or hideous, and we'll do a little makeover. They loved the idea. They loved it. And so then I was on my quest to find somebody. Now I did post, well, actually I haven't even posted the video yet, but you will see the video of my shower. Uh, I think probably by the time, maybe one or two days after I post this, that video will be posted. So you will get to see the before and after of, of my shower. But at the end of that video is where I call out for people to let me know, are you in the Maryland, DC, Virginia area? And if you have a colorful tub, you've been wanting to do a bathroom makeover, you're not like, you're not able to afford somebody to come in and just rip it all out and start over. So let's do it together. Well, I started thinking about my friend, my friend who I've known for 14 years, I have been over her house multiple times. And I know during that time that she has not She's wanted to do things in her house, but she's number one, not had the money to do it or has set aside the money to do it, right? Because I think sometimes projects, it can be very overwhelming. You know that it's going to cost some money and just thinking about how many thousands of dollars that it's going to cost, sometimes that alone can just, I don't know, make you feel like this is impossible. I, I can't do this. And so then you never do anything to your house, right? And that was her situation. She did she did nothing to her house. She couldn't move forward. It was like she was stuck. And being the DIYer that I am, she has said to me before, she's like, well, Serena, if you have any projects that you want to do, just let me know because I have a whole house here <laughs> full of things. And again, there was that hesitation of, but how would I coordinate that? How would I do a project in her house or anybody's house? Well, with this project, teaming up with Bathworks, this was the perfect opportunity to do this. And they said, yes, they liked the idea. I went to her and said, hey, what do you think about doing a bathroom makeover? Your bathroom is not too big. You've got colorful. Well, her tub is not colorful, but her tub is very, very warm. So no matter how many times she cleans it, it just never gets clean. It's just worn. And there are some yellow, very dated tile that surrounds her shower, her, well, that makes her shower that surrounds her tub. And again, she doesn't have money to do a full gut. And here's what's interesting. When I brought the project to her and I said, hey, I'm going to be teaming up with this company and we want to do a bathroom makeover. Can we do it? She's like, well, I don't know because I don't really want to refinish my tub and my tile. I want to get a whole new tub and I want to get like metro tile and I want this with some, you know, some white tile with like some black grout. Like she's telling me all the things that she wants. And I said to her, I'm like, but you can't afford to do that. So <laughs> do you want to do this makeover? Because I know what you want to do. You want to gut it, but do you want to do this makeover with us? We're going to refinish the tile. We're going to keep them in place and just refinish them, turn them bright white. We're going to do the tub, make that bright white, and we're going to do the walls. We're going to try to get a new, well, she doesn't have a vanity in her bathroom. She's got a, like a countertop. It's 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 in poor condition. You know, you can tell that it's been ruined by water. And so it's kind of coming apart. And there's just it, the bathroom just needs a lot of help. And so if you are actually part of my thrift diving challengers community on Facebook, 
you will have seen a picture. I will leave a link down below so that you can go and see that picture of what her bathroom looks like. But after, you know, trying to convince her <laughs> for a few minutes, she's like, you know what? Okay. All right. She still was not on a hundred percent on the same page as I was. And let me tell you, it took a long time to get her on that page because, you know, she and I had discussed that because she's not a DIYer, because she's someone who tends to be a little bit more negative in her thinking. And then when I say negative in her thinking, what I mean is just thinking that this isn't possibly going to work out, right? Like it's not that she didn't think it was going to be up to her level of, well, this is what I really want. It was more so like, I've been living with this bathroom for so many years. I This is just all I know. I, I just, I don't think it's going to really turn out to be as great as what you think it is, Serena. And I, I, and I had some convincing to do. I had to tell her like, yes, this is going to be a great bathroom. So once we got through that part of convincing her that this is going to be okay, this is going to work out, then we were ready to move forward. And at that point, I had to talk to a videographer. Now, there's a guy that I met, uh, I guess, probably about a year ago, and he he had done some, you know, a little bit of videoing for me, but I didn't really know any other videographers. I'd never worked with a videographer outside of working with companies that actually had their whole production, you know, set up, and I just came on set as the talent. I'd never hired my own videographer to do work for me. So this was a whole new chapter for me, but I was so excited to move in this direction but let me tell you one of the things that that I think held me back from moving in this direction. I think what held me back is that I thought that I needed to have all the answers, that I was the one who had to coordinate this entire thing, that I needed all the answers. I needed to know how to coordinate it, right? Like I, I had to be the project manager and the producer and, 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 you know, the talent. I had to wear all these different hats. And it was intimidating. And I think this is why I never moved in this direction. But let me tell you what happened when I actually sat down on the phone and talked to the videographer for about an hour. I explained to him the nature of the project. Here's what I'm doing. It's sponsored by this company. We're going to get in there and do a, a bathroom makeover. We're going to try to make it affordable. And we need to figure out a shoot schedule. Well, instead of me having to have all the answers, we actually coordinated the entire schedule. <laughs> We came up with an idea of, okay, day one, this is what we're going to do. We're going to, he said, day one, I'm going to bring my drone and capture some drone footage of you driving up to her house. And I was like, wait a minute, you got a drone? Like he was thinking of things that I wasn't even thinking of. Of course, I'm thinking of telling the story of how I got to her house and, you know, how, how this project came to be, but I wasn't thinking of the different shots from a videographer standpoint of capturing that story of the the drone and, you know, the shopping trip and some of those other things. And so I realized in that moment that coming together with multiple people to plan something like this or to plan any project is better than one mind trying to think of everything. And I think that is where I went wrong because in my mind, I thought that I had to be everything, everyone, wear all the hats. And I'm realizing that I don't have to be. In fact, because we've gotten so far, and I'm going to explain to you kind of where we are in the project right now, but because we've gotten this far, you know, we've done some days of filming, I'm starting to feel a little bit more confident about this. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I can hire a producer and have them actually create the storyline and <laughs> I don't have to do all that. Like, I can come together with a producer and and we can strategize different ideas and then have them you know, work out all the kinks and all the details and what are we doing on day one, day two, day three, whatever. I'm actually thinking of that now. So I have this idea in my mind that we are going to do 10 episodes of the thrift diving before and after makeover, you know, untitled show idea that I have in my mind. But I feel like it's possible now. Whereas before, I'm just like, this isn't possible. So, you know, it's really interesting now that I'm thinking about this is how often we put limitations in place before we even try them, right? Like I just told you two, lim two limitations. My friend, she had her limitations on what could be done in her house. She instantly kind of shut down the idea 
because in her mind, she she thought, well, I'm not going to be able to afford a bathroom makeover. I'm not handy. I can't do this. I can't afford that. And so she never moved forward because of those self-limiting beliefs. I had never moved forward outside of doing YouTube videos because I, and recording my own footage because I didn't believe that I could coordinate something. I came up with 10 million excuses for why it wouldn't work out. Instead of saying, I couldn't do it, I needed to change the question and say, how can I do it? And just working with someone else and having another brain strategize, actually three brains, because not only did myself and the videographer strategize, but my friend also threw in her suggestions. For example, she had told me, she said, well, Serena, when we're done filming, I can then come on your podcast and we can talk about this whole process, you know, what it was like for her as a homeowner to go through this process and and the limiting beliefs that she had and this fear of moving forward. She was very fearful, even though she, even though she got to a point where she was like, all right, all right, come on, let's do this. She was not excited about it. She still didn't have the vision and didn't think that it was going to be able to come together. But as she started seeing things changing, and we're not, I'll tell you, we're not, we haven't even started on the makeover yet, (laughs) but we've been doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff And some of the things that have to get done, which I'll share with you in a moment, those things have started getting done. But we haven't done any of the uh, tub and tile refinishing just yet. And I'll explain to you why in a moment. But because we had come together as a group, we were able to come up with some really great ideas. And instead of me thinking, well, this isn't possible. When I sat down with that videographer, we said, okay, how many days do we need to shoot? Let's let's think about what we're going to do on day one. Day one, okay, cool. You're going to bring your drone. We're going to get some shopping footage of my friend and I going to look at vanities. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to trail behind you. You know, don't pay any attention to me. I'm just going to trail behind you. I have you mic'd up. So I'll capture your conversation. And we just went shopping and looked at faucets and all kinds of things for her bathroom. And it was so nice. Can I tell you how nice it was to have somebody else with the camera in their hand? All I had to do was focus on what we were doing, which was trying to figure out what style of, of, uh, like vanities she liked, what kind of fixtures she liked and just capturing us looking at the stuff in order to get an idea of how we were going to move forward with what style she was most interested in. So it was just so nice. And then when he pulled out the drone, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, this is really cool. (laughs) So I realized that I don't have to figure it out all on my own. And I'm wondering if there's something that you've been wanting to do in your life. Maybe there's a project that you've been wanting to do, whether it's a bathroom project, whether it's a kitchen project, maybe you've been wanting to paint a piece of furniture or something. For some reason, you've been thinking you've got to figure it all out on your own. And I don't think that's the case. I think you have to find the right people that have the right answers. You know, don't be afraid to share with other people what it is that you're interested in doing because there's other people that have really good insights that can help you figure out how to move forward. So by me hiring the videographer, I was able to figure out, okay, here's what we're going to do on day one. Day two, I even had a challenge. I was like, oh man, we got to do... Okay, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to take out the, she's got some like MDF boards that are falling apart in her closet, like her little toiletry closet. So I said, it'd be great if we have some pine boards, we can stain them, do a nice top coat, make it look like a really nice uh, toiletry closet. But I'm not sure where we're going to do that. Am I going to bring the wood over to her house? Am I going to stain it over there with her? Like, I don't know how we should fit this into our schedule. Cause we had come up with like five days of shooting right? We think we can get this done in five days. And maybe the fifth day, it's a half day, but we can, you know, kind of plan for a full day if we need to. So he's like, well, hey, uh, day one, we're planning to do some, you know, shots at Home Depot, or we went to Lowe's, we're going to do some shopping trip footage at Lowe's. uh, And then, well, then day two, we're going to do some interviews, right? I'm going to get you sitting down with her in your shed looking at some paint chips and things like that. Why don't we actually cut the wood while we're there on day two? So I was like, I didn't think of that. Yes, thank you. (laughs) 
So having more people come together to to figure out something on how to do something, how to strategize, how to plan, it just made it so much easier. So now I'm super excited. I'm like, I am creating 10 episodes. I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know where we're going to get the budget for it, but we're going to do it. So that's what that is what we've been focusing on. So yes, we have done day one and day two. So we did the shopping trip. We did some of the interview type stuff. We captured some of that stuff here in the shed. And there was some stuff that had to happen between day two and day three. And these were not days that we were shooting continuously. So we needed to change her faucets, right? So if you if you see the picture that I posted, I think I have more than one picture that I posted, but I'll leave a link down below where you can see more pictures. The faucets in the shower have to be changed. Like they're, they're just in really bad conditions. There was no tub spout and it just needed, it just needed new fixtures. Well, you know, you have to hire a plumber in order to do that. You can't just pull them off and put them back on. Like this is something that has to be done from the access panel behind and you need a plumber to do that or if you can do you know plumbing yourself I don't have plumbing skills like that now thankfully we do well she has a plumbing friend contractor who was able to come in and do that for us in fact he got that done today (laughs) between yesterday and today he got that done so right now the status is the shower the shower tiles everything is still in place we haven't actually done any painting or any uh, tile refinishing or tub refinishing just yet, those fixtures are now in place. And when he pulled off the old fixtures, he had to put some tile there to patch up the holes because we went from three, I think she had two handles plus one in the middle. And now there's just one single handle, you know, that goes from left to right. And so when you make that change, you have to have extra tile and, you know, nobody's using these square four by four tiles. So he had a hard time finding just regular white (laughs) tiles in order to plop them in there. And they're going to be painted. Everything's going to be, you know, uniform by the time we're done when it's refinished. But that got done. We also had to, now this, this guy, he is a plumber by trade, but he does some contracting with, like he can do pretty much everything. So we had him also install a new light because the light, fixture that was there was in really bad condition. So we got a nice new modern light. She loves modern style decor. And he also moved some of the, uh, there was one receptacle that needed to kind of come up a little bit. It was too low to the counter. So he moved that up and then he added some paddle switches uh, and new covers. So right now, as it stands, we have all those new things, (laughs) but we haven't painted yet. She wants to just go white. She wants a white bathroom. And I know some people are thinking, well, that's so boring. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I would prefer if there was a little bit of color because it makes for a better before and after. But when you're working with someone who has a particular style, you got to kind of go with what they want, right? This is not just me trying to create a great after, but you have to focus on what they want. So she wants to go white, because we actually did consider black, (laughs) doing black walls. The only thing is her bathroom is very small and narrow. And just it's long. So the widest, the widest is like four feet, right? I mean, it's only four feet wide. That's not very, that's not very wide. And then you've got the tub. So maybe with the tub, I think it's probably seven feet wide. So there's not a lot of, you know, there's not a lot of space in there. And I think total, it's maybe 10 feet long. So it's a small bathroom. Going black could be really cave-like. So she and I decided we're going to bring in some black, but like, you know, we'll bring in black in other ways as accents, but we're going to do white walls. We're going to do just a nice semi-gloss. We're going to repaint the ceiling. I think there was some moisture problems in there because I don't think they run the fan very often. And so you see there's some peeling paint on the ceiling. So we're going to scrape that off. We're going to do white all around. The tub and tile will be nice, bright white versus the (laughs) outdated yellow tile and the worn bathtub. And we're also getting a new, uh, not a vanity. She didn't want a vanity because she didn't want to take up floor space. She just wants to replace the counter that's there. And a friend of mine, Edmundo, he has a granite company. And so he's going to donate to us a remnant of, I think, 
uh, quartz, like a quartz countertop. And so that's going to look beautiful. So I bought a sink. We have the new light. We have to do the shelving. Oh, and guess what? We are refinishing the floor. She's got, I'm going to call it ugly. Somebody in Facebook, somebody on, on in the Facebook group, they said they liked the floor. Eh, I don't like it. We are actually going to be refinishing the floor in a, it's not black, but it's like a, it's called Iron Ore by Sherwin-Williams. So it's like a really dark, uh, like a dark gray. And I think that's going to look beautiful. So that's what we're doing to the floor. And then, you know, we'll try to bring in some accents here and there with, you know, bringing in some black. We're going to do in the closet, the toiletry closet, we're doing the pine boards, but we're going to stain them ebony. So we're going to bring in some black there with some baskets. Right now, there's just a bunch of hair products and makeup just cluttered that cluttering that entire closet. So we're going to, you know, organize that and make it look good and, and, you know, have enough space for her to bring in some towels and washcloths and those kind of things. So it's going to look really good and I can't wait. Oh, we also have to paint <laughs> the bathroom doors. There's two doors in um, her bathroom, one coming from her bedroom and one coming from the hallway. And we're going to put on some new doorknobs because those doorknobs are just old silver, just very 1990s. And so we're going to give the doors a good cleaning, fresh coat of paint and new doorknobs. I think we, I wanted to do black, but I think we're going with the uh, like brush nickel because we, we went with that with the fixtures and stuff. So overall, this is going to look really, really good. And I don't know how much money yet. Like we didn't really have a budget. <laughs> we were like negative 50 for budget. Because the whole time she's like, Serena, I don't have any money for this. I don't have any money for this. So I'm like, okay, well, we're going to try to make this as affordable as possible. I don't think that you can get away with a makeover for the most part that's like, that costs nothing. Unless, you know, unless you already have paint, you already have fixtures. I mean, there are some costs that you are going to have to pay when you're doing a room makeover. I mean, you know, do you want to pay a contractor to come in and rip out all the tile and put in a, a new tub? Eh, that can actually cost you five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000, if not more. And most of us don't have money for that. So going with paint, but buying new fixtures, getting a new shower curtain. These are some of the things that we can do that if you buy them all at once, yeah, it can be kind of pricey. I mean, even if you're going to home goods, even if you're buying things from the thrift store, we, now I did find well, okay, we had gone to her mom's house. Her mom is moving. And we did find some artwork. And what we were going to do is take the frame, take out whatever artwork is in there, and then do some abstract black and maybe some gray, maybe black, white, and gray. Do something on a nice canvas or take a piece of quarter-inch plywood and put it behind the picture frame, paint it white, and then allow her to do something creative. She even said she's a creative person. She feels that she's a creative person or she was a creative person years ago when she was younger, but she hasn't expressed that for a number of years. So I'm going to allow her to kind of go crazy with whatever abstract art she wants to create. And that is going to be the main feature piece in her bathroom. So it's going to look great. And I found the perfect frame for it at the thrift store the other day. It was like $8.00. And it's going to take up that entire, not the entire, I mean, it's going to be placed nicely. Um, so it's not going to overwhelm her bathroom, but it's big enough that it's going to take up some wall space. It's going to look amazing. And so you're probably wondering, well, when is this going to be done? Oh, gosh. Well, yesterday I was over there and my friend was not feeling good. Now, here's, here's what we were also going to try to do, too. And I'll just back up a little bit. We were going to try to clean, clean, clean her sh her shower and tub. I was about to say shub. Funny. <laughs> we were going to clean our hearts out before the videographer came the following day. Now, we were actually supposed to start filming today. Today was our day three. And I was going to go over there yesterday after the um, you know plumber got done putting on the new faucets. And we were going to take out the... Um, you know, the caulking, because you got to do all that before you refinish your tub and shower. You got to take out the caulking. You have to, you have to clean like you've never cleaned before, basically, because any amount of residue from soap, from water left on the surface, you could potentially ruin the finish so that 
you know, maybe in two months, three months, it's st- or a year, it starts to peel and the product doesn't work. So your your tile in your tub has to be extremely clean. Nothing can be on the surface. And so we didn't want to waste the videographer's time by having him like film two hours of us cleaning, <laughs> right? So we decided we were going to get a jump start on that cleaning. And then she called me up the other day and she's like, oh, Serena, I don't think you can come over here. I don't feel good. I just feel horrible. I'm going to go back to bed. I said, okay, well, just, you know, let me know. Maybe later I'll come if you're feeling better. She wasn't feeling better. So long story short, she came up positive with COVID. Stupid COVID had totally ruined our day three of shooting today. So now I'm just waiting for her to get a negative test result so that we could resume shooting. Now, once we get this done, this project done, then I'm passing everything on to the videographer. He's also going to do all the editing. So, you know, my part will be to let him know what the storyboard looks like, because we've captured a lot of footage already. And so once we capture the rest of the makeover, then he'll use whatever my direction is to put it all together. And that's going to take probably to the end of January. That's when the first draft is going to be done. So then at that time, I'll be able to say, okay, well, here's, here's where I think we need to change. Let's add this footage in, you know, whatever, whatever. And I'm hoping that it looks good. This is the first time I've done this. I don't know what it's going to look like, but that's okay. And here's a lesson for you because I think, you know, when, when we are not sure how that thing is going to turn out, whether it's a piece of furniture you're refinishing, whether it's a room makeover that you're doing, whether it's a video that you're trying to make look like an HGTV style video, it's okay to make mistakes. Your first attempt may not be exactly what you had in mind. It may not live up to your expectations, but that's okay. Because guess what? The second piece of furniture you do, the second room makeover that you do, the second uh, before and after 30 to 40 minute episode is going to be better than the first episode. And so I know that however it turns out, I needed to get that out of my system. I needed to kind of mess up. I need it to not be wonderful. I mean, it would be kind of great if it was. But if it wasn't, I'm not going to be too upset. You know why? Because I actually am moving forward. I did it. I did it. I did that thing that I said I didn't think that I could do. So what's that thing that you think that you can't do, but you really could do it and maybe you're going to mess it up. Maybe it's not going to be as great as what you think it is, but you got it out of your system. So then you can take what you've learned and then go on to the next number two thing that you try I mean, what is that thing? You know, I'll tell you one thing that I've learned from this project. Another thing that I've learned, because I've shared with you a few things that I've learned so far. Okay, so one thing that I've learned from this project is I didn't anticipate how financially we were going to do this. You know, in my mind, I was looking at, okay, here's all the materials that I need. And I think that I can supply this list. And then I need my friend to supply that list. Well, when she saw that list, she's like, oh, I'm just overwhelmed. I don't even know where to start. I don't know how much this is going to cost. I don't have money. And I wasn't anticipating her not being able to financially cover some of those things, right? So, and these are things like when you're done the makeover, you, you're going to need a new shower curtain. You're going to need a nice rug for the floor. You might want to you know, add all the trimmings to the room to to really give it life, to make it look presentable, not just for yourself, but, you know, also for for the video. You know, when you look at uh, like an HGTV style makeover, they don't just give you the room. They actually put furniture in it and dress it up and make it look. And that's not, you know, I'm sure that's a, a company that comes in and places all that stuff. That's not purchased for the homeowner, right? And I'm finding myself in that situation now where I am thinking about all of the different aspects of this room makeover that generally I wouldn't have really thought too much about because if it was for my home, yeah, I would just purchase these things. But now I'm thinking, okay, am I purchasing the rug, the new rug for the bathroom? 
Am I purchasing, you know, some of the little toiletry organizers for the the new quartz countertop? Am I purchasing the baskets for the new toiletry closet? Like, how are we doing that? What about the new tie, you know, the new towels and washcloths that, you know, you might want to put in there to make look pretty? Am I buying that and using it as a prop? Is she buying that or am I buying it? And then she's reimbursing me. Like (laughs) those are all things that we hadn't even really discussed because it was something that I hadn't even really considered other than saying, hey, you're gonna need a shower curtain. You're gonna need this. These are the things that you're gonna pay for. And what I found is that she wasn't really moving quickly enough on getting those things. Um, I knew that I would tell her like, yeah, we need a light, we need this, but she didn't really have the money for it. Not until, I think she said, you know, a couple months down the road, she wasn't really going to have money for these things. And so I found myself having to step in like, okay, well, got to get the sink. I mean, we can't, we can't do a vanity. Well, not a vanity, but we can't do the quartz top countertop without the sink, because in order for my friend to cut the quartz, he needs the sink to use as a template. So there's just a lot of coordinating in terms of those things that I hadn't really anticipated. So I I actually need to sit down and figure out like, what are my costs? <laughs> so moving forward, if I'm getting a brand to sponsor a an episode, then I'll know, okay, we're doing a kitchen makeover. Well, here's the things that we're going to need for a kitchen. We're going to need, you know, you're probably going to want to have you know, some sort of countertop things to look great. You're going to need like a backsplash. And so then we can start planning all of those expenses and who's going to be responsible. Is it the homeowner? Is it, you know, Serena? But Serena's going to be needing to pay for that. uh, But it's got to be covered from the brand, right? And then when I go to a brand, so before I even get to that point, then I can go to a brand knowing that, all right, we're doing a bathroom makeover. We're going to need all of these things like as props. And we're going to, you know, we know we need a light. So let's go ahead and budget, you know, $70, $80 for a light. Those are the kind of things that I'm learning now. And I wouldn't have even gotten to this point if I wasn't in the thick of this. So do you see what I mean? That it's okay to not know everything before you start, because some things you will learn as you go. And then even after you get started and you're like, oh boy, I didn't know I was paying this much money out of pocket. (laughs) This is cutting into my profits. But going forward, I know that. So what are the things that you may learn when you're tackling a project that you've never encountered before? Because you will tackle some things that you just didn't anticipate. And, you know, planning, of course, is very important. And I think if maybe I had had a little bit more time to plan this, or maybe if I talked to someone who had done something like this, I probably would have known, hey, you've got a plan for how you're going to feature this as an after, you know, you've got to have props, you've got to style it. Those are costs. Do you want to rent some things? Maybe there's a company that rents bathroom items that you could have just rented. Who knows? But these are all things that I've got to think about going forward. And maybe you've got to think about for your projects, whatever those projects are. But don't beat yourself up because you didn't think of these things ahead of time you will learn things. And that's okay. That's okay. So I'm not beating myself up about it. Although I am looking at the receipts on the credit card. I'm like, Oh, I just spent another 100 today 200. Okay, yeah, that's right. I have to buy a shower curtain rod (laughs) and shower curtain hooks and all of these things that nobody else is purchasing. But I want to make this project amazing. I want to make this as good as I could. And then the next one, I'll take whatever thing, everything that I've learned and apply those things to the next video. So that's kind of where we are with this project. I think it's going to be great. You can expect it. I I say by the time we get done with all the edits, we definitely want to have the brand look at it and, and put their stamp of approval on it. I would say probably early February, I would say. So Super exciting, something that's coming from thrift diving, something that's new. And of course, I'm going to still keep doing the podcast. I know I've been kind of slacking off, but this is the reason why I've been slacking is because my whole focus has been on this project. And I didn't even really know if I wanted to talk about it on a podcast because I'm like, well, it's just me telling you about a project. But then I thought, well, okay, maybe you might want to hear the backstory. I don't know. (laughs) But that's what I've been working on. And it's super exciting. I'm I'm just, I'm loving it. Anyway, I want to know what you're working on. Tell me, send me an email, serenatthriftdiving.com. 
And I do hear from some of you and I appreciate your emails. I really, really do. Because sometimes it does feel like, you know, you're just talking into a void. You don't really know who is, you know, who's going to be listening and who's going to be uh, responding. But I just want to tell you, I love that you have shown up all throughout 2023. I'm going to try to put out several more episodes to make up for the ones that I didn't do in the previous weeks. And we're going to talk about, I think in the next episode, I'm going to talk to you about the 75 hard challenge that I've been doing, because some of you may have some health goals for 2024. And maybe you might be inspired by that. But we're also going to be talking about just general goals as well. All right. Thanks for listening. And I will see you next episode. Diving. Find it ugly, make it pretty. Mm-hmm. Paint the power tools, alright. Saving money with those thrift store vibes.